Hi, welcome to Talk Back Live, a show that gets you involved in live conversation and sports with Brian Camp on Sports Update, bringing you the latest developments in today's world of sports. And now here's your host, Frank Allen. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and a pleasant night to each and every one of you out there, wherever you are in your different time zones around the world and across the country. It's Thursday. Once again, we're here and we're coming to you live from New York City. That's where we originate. It's 8 p.m. on the East Coast, 5 p.m. on the West Coast. It's Friday morning in London at 1 a.m., 3 a.m. in uh, Israel, and we have 10 a.m. in Tokyo, Japan. And everyone's is getting together, gathering around. We're so glad to have you aboard with us. The name of the show is called Talk Back Live, and I am going to be with you. I'm your host. I'll be with you for the next hour. We're going to uh, do a lot of things in that particular hour, and we invite you all to come along. We always thank all of you guys who've been with us for a very long time. Thanks for being with us. We're so grateful. And for those of you who are joining us for the first time, well, we just want to get acquainted and let you know what we're all about. If you're just coming in this very moment and wondering how it goes, well, as I said, I'm the host of the show and I get things started. And while I get things started, you can join in at any time you like. That's why we call the name of the show Talk Back Live, because we talk to each other. And you can do the same thing by using your fingers and a keyboard on your computer, on your cell phone, or even your tablet. Either one of those devices will get you there. If you have a screen, too, and you can watch us. And if you're in an area where there's lots of great Wi-Fi and a hotspot, all you have to do is just type in to whatever you want to say. I will see you right there on the big screen. And of course, I will entertain all of your thoughts and ideas. And uh, because that, that's what it's all about. Free exchange ideas of opinion. And uh, if there's anything that you want to talk about in particular, rather than just say hello, and you could do that too. A lot of you want to just say hello and that's it. If there's anything in particular you like to talk about, feel free because uh, we will entertain that for you. We'll talk about anything. We talk about anything under the sun. And uh, if there's something that you want to let out, feel free. All you have to do, as I said, let your fingers do the walking. And uh, for those of you who are watching us for the first time, uh, remember, we're coming to you from three different places. We're on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. We're all live. And of course, we want you to tell your friends about it because we want them in on the action too. All they have to do is uh, hear from you and how they can do that, particularly if you're on Facebook. All you have to do is just tag them, tag all of your friends, maybe not all of them, just a few of them. It doesn't matter. As long as you get as many as possible, you can do as many as possible because uh, we'd like to see them as well. And if they like what they see, if they like what they hear, then naturally, of course, uh, they'll come back again and again, just like you. And so that's all we ask you to do is just tag them. You know how to do that too. And those of you who are watching us on YouTube, you got to understand something that on YouTube, well, we have our YouTube channel, which what I want you to do is go onto that YouTube channel. If you're watching us from our YouTube channel, all you have to do is click on, you see where it says subscribe. Well, take your mouse, drag it over, point the arrow to it and click on to it. And just as simple as that, there's no uh, fees and charge, nothing, no membership, no nothing. All you have to do is just click on and it's right there. Now, the reason why we want you to do that, not only does it help us, but it also gives you an idea of what uh, we got going. In other words, let's say, for instance, I come on live and let's say, for instance, you're just wandering around the Internet and you want to see the show, but you forgot all about it. And if you're online, well, of course, naturally, the instant message will come up late, letting you know that it's a reminder. Instant reminder will pop up and that's all you have to do. And it, you click onto that instant message and it brings you right to the page too. Just as simple as that. It's very easy. And when you tag your friends on Facebook, they'll see that information coming from you. Right. Once you see that, once they see that, they'll click onto that and it brings them right to us. Now, those of you who are watching us on Instagram, well, you needn't do anything. It just except just to keep the word going. Let us let everyone know your friends, family, uh, relatives, everybody that, you know, let them know that uh, we're here and we like to uh, have them be part of us. It's just as simple as that. And. Uh, as far as tagging them and communicating with them, I believe you can do that too. All you have to do is just, uh, I think, type 
my name in. I don't know. You could do it the same thing they do it on Facebook, I believe. I'm not sure. All you have to do is just type my name in or even the um, go to your browser, right? And and cut and paste the, uh, uh, the, the, the actual link to the uh, website and it brings them right to them. It just brings them right there. All they have to do is click on and bring them right there. However, as long as you can get them out there, and of course, if you're not going to stay with us for the whole full hour, we really appreciate, you know, the time that you could actually spend with us. We really appreciate that. It's no problem at all. Uh, and uh, if you have to go early, then we understand. But I hope that's not the case. I hope you can stay with us and enjoy. Now, right through the show, in, co in conjunction with interacting with you, we love to do that each time. Uh, we have our regular routine as well. Now, just a few minutes from now, we've got Brian Camp coming around along with us. And we're going to link up with Brian. He's coming out of Charlotte, North Carolina. So we're going to link up from New York to Charlotte, North Carolina. And he's coming along with the latest developments in today's world of sports. Not only will you be able to see him on camera, but you'll be able to ask him questions if you have any sports-related program or sport re sports-related questions. Uh, he will be able to answer them for you. So he'll be linking up. If you see him, you could see him right here on Facebook or right here on YouTube. Instagram is another story. Instagram, we don't have that luxury of actually having him on camera. However, you can see him. You'll hear his voice. His voice will be out there and you'll be able to uh, talk to him just as well. And still, all you have to do is type in your questions or whatever you want to do or conversate with him. Say hi to him. Hi to me. And we'll see it right there. Now, whatever he doesn't see, I, of course, I will certainly see. And all I have to do is just relay all of your sports questions to him. So that's coming up, too. And that's coming up within this half hour, a few minutes from now. So stand by for that. That's coming up. Also, we'd like to tell you that we have our regular This Day in History. Now, whatever went on on This Day in History, and this is what they call, I call it leap year, but they call it leap day. This is the 29th of February, the very last day, the very last day of February, right? Uh, so sometimes we don't always get to the 29th. Sometimes we stop at 28th. But whatever happened on this day in history on the 29th, we have that information for you. That's coming back, and we'll have that coming back in time for you. Uh, that's coming up later on in the program. And of course, later on, before the show is over, we're not going to leave the show or leave the air unless, until we give you that information on uh, the movies that we have for you. Now, I have a great selection of movies that I bring to you each week directly from Turner Classic Movies. And um, the reason why I do that is because we know that the weekend is coming up, right? It's coming up and it comes really quick. You know, when you leave one weekend, the next weekend just comes just like that. I don't know. It just goes just that fast. I really wish time wouldn't go as fast as it, as it does because it makes me that much older that quicker. Nevertheless, uh, we have that coming up for you and uh, a great deal of movies. So I'll have that coming up for you. And since the weekend is coming up, those are the movies that I suggest to you that you could watch if you're so inclined to catch up on movies this weekend. Uh, if you're not going to do whatever you're going to do over the weekend, you want to do something different and catch up on some movies or maybe add that to your bucket list of what to do this weekend. I am giving you those movies on what to watch to add to your bucket list on what, what to watch this weekend. So that's all coming up. And uh, of course, we look forward to that. And uh, want to say hello to Mary. Hi, Mary. Welcome aboard once again. Uh, every four years, Mary said, and I'm aware of that, Mary. Every four years, we get the um, this, this leap year thing. And uh, so this is, um, we've got a lot of things coming up. So stay with us. Mary, you weren't born on leap year, were you? I don't think she was. Otherwise, she would have said so. Anyway, uh, those of you who are watching, Mary is out there watching. Brian is here in the house, too. As I said, he's going to be along. And those of you, uh, please come on in. Don't be shy because you need no alibi. All you have to do is just drop in. And remember that even if you're new to the program, you're just as important as people who have been around with us a long time. So stay along with us. So, ladies and gentlemen, with that in mind, let's keep the show going. Remember that all of the views... And the opinions expressed on this show, Talk Back Live, does not necessarily reflect the view or the opinions of the people of Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Zoom, or any other social media outlet or broadcast facility. Well, I already mentioned it. 
This is the very last day of February. So since it's February with the very last day of Black History Month, and this is it. You know, that doesn't mean you couldn't still celebrate. You could do that all year long. That's what I suggest. Do it all, all year long. But they just happen to have a month for Black History Month. And today is the last day. And what have you done for Black History Month? Or what did you what did you learn? You know, or what did you do? You know, maybe there were a lot of events that were taking place throughout your city, throughout the country, throughout the world. Uh, you know, all kinds of things and all kinds of celebrations occur. But this is the last day of the celebration of Black History Month. Also, the last day of National Cancer Prevention Month. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to stay healthy and stay alive, right? And uh, so National Cancer Prevention Month. Now, if you have any ideas or any aspirations of maybe um, making some kind of financial contribution to uh, National uh, Cancer uh, Prevention Month, well, you know what I do? There's always, my, my first thought was always the American Cancer Society. That was always my first thought. That's a legitimate outlet uh, and you can go there and if you want to make some kind of contributions or some kind of help, I don't know if they do any voluntarily uh, volunteer work over there, but you could always check that out. You can go online. You can check out anything online. Google it and find out for yourself. But it's it's National Cancer Prevention Month, the last day of it. But we still keep it in the back of our minds. All right. All year long, every day, 365 days a year, we keep it in mind anyway. This just, just happens to be the month and we want to stay as healthy as possible as we go along in life. And speaking of being healthy and possible and and and, and prosperous, uh, we also have for you, uh, and I say it over and over again, I can't say it enough, there's a, a new vaccine on the market. Well, it's not new, but it's updated version of the COVID-19 vaccination. And uh, if you haven't taken yours yet, maybe you ought to uh, think about that and do it right now. All you have to do is go and make an appointment You go to any of your pharmacists, your local pharmacists, wherever you are. And uh, if you don't want to give them a call, maybe go online and make the appointment. In some cases, depending on where you live, they may be uh, uh, areas where you can go and actually just walk in and say, I just want to take the, um, uh, the, the COVID vaccination. Uh, some pharmacists do that depending on where you live. Uh, but if you're in an area where they don't allow that and they say, well, you have to make an appointment, maybe you can make an appointment right there on the premises when you walk through the door. Maybe. I can't swear to that, but, you know, it makes a lot of sense if they say, OK, you know, since you're here, you might as well uh, uh, make the appointment here and you can do that. Otherwise, you could always do it online. And a lot of people do that. A lot of people don't want to, you know, just, just want to save time, right? save time and do it online. And in most cases, I find that when you make an, an appointment online, uh, they could be openings for the following day. Or maybe, let's say something, if you did it early in the morning and you could find it, it tells you right there. It tells you right there. You could, you could do it the following day or maybe that same day. And you'll see, they'll have open, they'll they'll tell you where the openings are, what they have available, and uh, you get the earliest that you can get it. And once you make those appointments, ladies and gentlemen, please keep the appointments. Don't don't flake out on it. You know, take it is very important. It's 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 simple. It doesn't take that long. Uh, they only ask you for about fifteen minutes of your time to hang around after you take the shot. I guess you know that by now. They always ask you to sit down and. Take about 15 minutes for yourself and then uh, before you leave, because sometimes uh, people get affected by them in some form or another. Some people are allergic to uh, vaccine vaccination shots, but they always ask you to sit back. And, uh, of course, you know, uh, they'll take that 15 minutes and then, you know, after that, then you walk on out. That's all it takes. That's all it takes. So uh, we want to keep all of that in mind. Vaccinations, they're right there. They're all right there. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, again, just in case you're just joining us, it's called uh, Talk Back Live. And of course, it's you and I against the world, and we're going to be here for a whole hour. Kenneth Mitchell, the actor best known for his work in Star Trek Discovery, has died. Now, the actor had been uh, battling ALS for about five years. 
Mitchell appeared in numerous TV shows and films throughout his career, earning his first TV credit in 2001 for Elite Years. And um, he went on to star in, as Eric Green in the CBS series Jericho from 2006 to 2008. He was 49 years old. Peter Anthony Moore, the lead singer of the popular reggae band Morgan Heritage that he found with his four siblings, he died Sunday. And in a statement posted on Sunday on social media, the family asked uh, for privacy and thanked the people, that means all of you, in advance for their love and support. The announcement did not share uh, the causes of death, and Morgan was 46 years old. Richard Lewis, the critically acclaimed stand-up comic known for his uh, droll, all his droll delivery and his brutal uh, commentary and his candor, well, he passed away too as well. And the actor revealed in 2023 that he was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease and recommitting himself at the time to working on Curb Your uh, Enthusiasm alongside his longtime friend, Larry David. And Lewis died in his home in Los Angeles on Tuesday night after suffering a heart attack and he was 76 years old. Right now, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go over to Charlotte, North Carolina, and we do that each week. And uh, of course, uh, we bring Brian Camp in with us. He's directly from Charlotte, North Carolina, because what he has for us, as we already promised you, the latest developments in today's world of sports on Sports Update. Good evening, Brian. Good evening to you. Hope all is well. How's everybody doing? We're doing good over here. New York uh, kind of cleared up a little bit. Uh, we, 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 we got out of the rain. The skies are clear. And uh, we're waiting for the weather to warm up so we can get back to normal with that. But I think mean, it's fine. Okay. Well, we had some pretty good weather today. Uh, this week, we reached 71, 74 degrees a couple of days ago. And um, now it's just back to mild temperature. But yeah, it was after a while. I was started to put on my shorts for a while there, but um, but it was it was warm. It was it was very nice. It was warm, and um, we had a little clouds, a little rain mixed in. But it was the weather was still warm, and you had a warm gust, a gust of wind that that made it a little a tad bit cooler. But other than that, it was it was great weather here in the Queen City of North Carolina, oh. and. Um, too quick to uh, put on your shorts yet because this weather has a tendency of fooling you and you can get very sick. Of course, I don't have to tell you that. You know that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Uh, that's that's very true. Um, but this is typical North Carolina weather, though, yeah. during this time of the year. And um, so, but, you know, I'm, I'm still thinking that I'm still living in New York where I, I still got to carry on a hoodie and, and a, a thick shirt, thick jacket just to stay warm, just to be on the safe side. But then, like I said, like usually around the morning, it's like that. But then around 10, 11 o'clock, boom, just like that. The weather's warm again. So um, it's just typical North Carolina, Southern type of uh, weather. But um, hope all is well. Hope everybody's enjoying themselves today who's tuning in globally, nationally, and locally. We say good evening to you. Let me get the sports um, we're going to start off with some Black History stuff. Now, two weeks ago, we we did we did um, we did football. Then we did the NFL. We did um, last week. We did the um, it was it was the uh, Major League Baseball. And now we're going to end with this one with the NBA. So I'm going to start off there. Uh, black History. This is all first first timers for African Americans or people of color. 1950. Earl Cooper drafted in to the NBA. He was the first. Uh, Earl Loy played in the NBA for the first time in October 31st, 1950. In 1953, Don Boxdale, as a Boston Celtic name to the NBA All-Star team, that was, I don't know if that was televised, 1955, back to Earl Lloyd again. Earl Lloyd and Jim Tucker play and won an NBA championship in 1955. 1958, Bill Russell wins the NBA MVP. That's the first time. 1964, this is the first time. This was this was a major breakthrough back in 1964. It was the first African-American starting five of Sam Jones, 
Casey Jones, Bill Russell, Tom Sanders, and Willis, no, excuse me, Willie Norlis, Norlis, I should say. Yeah, that was the uh, first time uh, a starting five of all black lineup starting in the lineup. Sam Jones, Casey Jones, Bill Russell, Tom Sanders, and Willie Knowles. And um, that's that's a history moment. Just like last week, I, I said back in September of 1971, um, the Pittsburgh Pirates had an all-black um, starting lineup. And um, that was a first, too, um, during the time that I remember. It was, it was, I, was, I was young, um, but I, was, I knew about it because I followed sports at a very early age. In 1966, Bill Russell became the first coach and won two titles as a player coach. Bill Russell played um, as a player. Won, he won like nine championships. And then uh, he, uh, after Red Auerbach retired from being the coach, he moved upstairs to become the GM. And then he, he asked Bill Russell to become the first coach to, to, for the Boston Celtics. He did not want to do it, but then after talking to him, he decided, yes, I will do this. He, so he became a coach for the Boston Celtics and won two championships as a player coach. 1968, Jackie White, NBA first referee and official. 1970, Willis Reed wins NBA Finals MVP. Remember that his, his, scar, his uh, historical moment when he was limping? Back in 1970, he uh, was his Knicks, the New York Knickerbockers, was playing the LA Lakers. He was he had banged his knee in Game Five of the NBA Finals. Uh, he hit it so bad that he sat out Game Six, and then the historical Game Seven at the Garden, where it was a, a, a crowd of nineteen thousand, and they all came out and they saw Willis Reed was this still in the locker room. They and, the, and, the, and they just ejected him. And, and, you know, I heard that game on the radio because back then we didn't really have TV broadcasts for NBA Finals. And you hear the great Mark Albert saying, here comes Willis, here comes Willis. Willis Reed was coming out, came out solo. Uh, his knees all shot up. And he, then he warmed up. And you see the Lakers on the opposite side. Excuse me if I'm taking so long. I'm just trying to set the scene because that was, that was, that was big back then for uh, New York um, City back then. And uh, Willis came, came out, practice, and you see Wilt Chamberlain, Jerry West, and, and Elgin Bell are just watching, just staring and watching. That's when we knew the Lakers was going was going to lose because they didn't expect the captain. Tip off came. Willis Reed hit the first jump shot, and you hear Marvin Alvin say, "Yes." Came down the lane again, jump shot. Yes. After that. We knew it was over. He only he only scored those those two shots. After that, what Clyde Frazier just took the game in his hands, and the Lakers never recovered. They just lost, and that was a historical moment for me growing up in New York City. I was glued to the radio. I was eight years old when that happened. Not quite eight yet, but I was eight. I was going almost eight years old, and it was a historical moment for the people in New York City. They won the title again back in 1973 when um, they uh, won the game in, in uh, the, the series in five. And guess what? They never won another NBA title since then. That's why the Madison Square Garden is the epic of all arenas where because there's magic. It's just magic. At, it's something about Madison Square Garden is it's the mecca of all arenas and everything. So I just want to throw that at, at you. 1975, the first pair of coaches in the finals, Al, Al Adams and Casey Jones. That was in 1975 when the Golden State Warriors met. Um, who did they beat? I'll get back to you on that. I remember that. I remember that series. Al Adams was the it was the Golden State, and I believe it was the Bullets. They was playing the Baltimore Bullets. 2002. Robert Johnson, billionaire, founder of BET, majority owner, and NBA governor, became the first black owner in the NBA. Yes. And that's it for Black History Moment. But this day in sports, February 29th, 1956, Cleveland Indians team is sold for $4 million. Hank Greenberg was part of the new ownership. Hank Greenberg was a legend 
um, back then uh, as a player. 1964, the Cincinnati Royals. Jerry Lucas and Oscar Robinson combined both to score 40 points each in a game. 1964, North Carolina high school basketball team play a 58, 56 to 54 score in 13 overtimes. Are you kidding me? 13 overtimes. That's amazing. And they only 56 to 54. That was some terrible shooting back back then. 1972, Hall of Famer right fielder Hank Allen becomes the first player to earn $200,000 a year annually salary. And birthdays, just one. Al Rosen, third baseman, major league player, and nationally executive, was born in Spartansburg, South Carolina. And ladies and gentlemen, that is sports on this historical moment that I made for the 1970 New York Knickerbockers. There you go, the Knickerbockers. Now, Knickerbockers, I don't know. I remember that's what they used to call them, the New York Knickerbockers. I'm wondering, I'm wondering if that was the Knickerbockers were named after a beer. There was a beer. This was before your time, though. It was a beer called Knickerbocker Beer. <laughs> trying to wonder. <laughs> I remember the, the name, but I don't remember it being out during that time. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah I remember it very well. And Knickerbocker Beer. Now, I'm trying to wonder. But I, I think the, the, the word Knickerbocker, I don't know if 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 the if it was too long, they cut it to the Knicks because uh, it was Knickerbocker. It's just it's just too long of a word to say. Yep. You, you just want to. Well, all of us in, in this day and age, all of us are, are, are verbally lazy, so we cut things down. We say Knickerbocker instead of Knickerbocker. We say the Knicks, or we say something like, let's say, for instance, um, the New York Mets were once the New York Metropolitan. Well, Yes, exactly. <laughs> right. The New York Metropolitans, that's right. So or the Oakland A's originally name is the Oakland Athletics. That's right. So all of us are verbally lazy. We don't want to say all the words. We just want to cut it down short. It saves a lot of time, you know, uh, right. especially for people my age. You know, you get older and, you know, you you don't live as long as someone is that's younger. So you want to get things out of the way. So, you know, say it, say it loud and get it out of the way, you know? That's right. Yeah. But, um, Hey, you know, speaking of sports too, and, and we talked about it before, uh, March is starting tomorrow. Uh, that just tells me about March madness. That's coming. Around. Yes. But I want to thank Mary for, for putting that in the, uh, in the comments. I was right. I was going to get to that. March madness is starting I believe this Sunday or the following week when they um, complete all the conference finals mm -hmm. for the tournament, who's in the tournament or who's going to be pushed out of the tournament. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a field of 64 teams or schools going at it. And I believe the first Monday, the first weekend in April, we'll have the semifinals. And then on that Monday will be the finals. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then this summer, this summer, we got the Olympics coming up this time in Paris. There's a lot of things happening this summer in the Olympics. So, uh, and uh, so. The city of love, Paris. Yeah. I've never been there. I'd love to go. I love yeah, it. I can't either. That's probably, that's one of my lists to um, go on to, um, into Paris to, you know, Europe. You know, I want to see how the Europeans live. I, I, I hear so much great history in in Europe. So I want to, I want to take a trip out, out there. Maybe soon. We'll see. Jazz singer Laura DePice is in the house. She's probably been to Paris out there singing. She's probably been there. If Laurie is still there, were you ever there, Laurie, in Paris? You know, she she's a jazz singer, Laurie DePice. In the okay. House. Okay. Well, you know, maybe Laurie, you might want to just tune, just send send something into the show uh, <laughs> with the copyrights, of course, because we can't play anything without the copyrights, and we could all just hear the beautiful song that that uh, that you have re render and you know you could just um I be have, so kind i have one of her cds okay one of her cds you know i'll i'll, I'll let you i'll let you hear it you know we got a chance to maybe play it like before the show starts or towards the end you know when the show is about to end you know we could play have a little fun with it and just listen to great jazz yeah yeah boy that's that's the, the what they call it, the american classical music Yes. Yeah, that's it. 
Well, I'm thanking you for the sports. I'm sure there's more to come. Uh, I look forward to a lot of these things that are coming on and baseball too. I can't wait. I, I had yeah. a yeah. I had a guy yesterday. He saw me. I had my Yankee jacket on, and uh, he pointed to the emblem on my jacket. He said, "We're gonna do good this year." I said, "Oh, you're a Yankee guy." I said, "Okay, we get along, you know." So I'm looking forward to that because the Yankees didn't have a great season last. N neither did the Mets for that case, you know. It was disappointing for both New York teams. And yes, your, and your Giants too. Yeah, every time I wear my giant, my San Francisco Giant gear out here in North Carolina. They said, uh, you're a Giant fan? I said, yeah. I was born and raised in Brooklyn, New York. Well, how do you become a Giant fan? Then I have to give the, have to stop and give them the history. I said, back in 1860s something, 1860, whatever it was, 18, uh, 1883, that's when the Giants became, if they were born, and they once originally played in New York. Yeah. So I always said that my... Older siblings, I mean, my older family members were were New York Giant fans. And yeah. as a kid, my family used to take me to Shea Stadium in yeah. the mid to late 60s to see the Giants. When they came into town, we had to see the Giants and the Mets. I had another sibling, yours truly, that's, that I'm talking to, was a Yankee fan. So we didn't like the Yankees. We stuck with the National League, so we, we, we were Giant fans. But that's how I became a Giants fan um, between my family. There were Yankees versus Giants. And I stuck with the Giants because of Willie Mays, the, the, the say hey kid. I was, I never switched my ball teams. I never, I, I was always a Yankee guy. You know, that, I, that's, I know. you know, yeah. uh, for better or worse. It's just like married to them. You know, you know, you, 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 you go along with the bitter and the sweet, you know, and you stay with them, you know, it's just like with my football teams, the same thing. Every team that I, that I enjoy, I, I started from the beginning. I, I love the Knicks, but I never was a, a you know, a, a Knicks supporter, you know, right. I, you know, I had my own team. I had the Lakers. You yeah. Well, Chamberlain with the finger roll. Yes. Finger roll, right. So I don't know. So many things happen, but I look forward to all of these events coming up. Uh, in it seems like uh, when the summertime come comes up, it seems like there's more. There's more to look forward to. You got baseball. You got the Olympics, and and of course, March Madness is right around. So that's right. And the NBA playoffs are coming up too. You know, it's like um, 24 games left in the season. Yeah. So we're going to get ready for May and June for the for the playoffs. Yes. Well, we'll see what happens. And we'll catch you back here tomorrow, no? 1020, yes. Okay, we'll be looking forward to seeing you then, all right? Everybody enjoy your evening. Take care. Okay, take care. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Brian Camp uh, with the latest developments in today's world of sports on Sports Update. He's here every week at this time, and he brings us great sports. And I love talking sports. I'm a sports guy myself. It's just that he has the knowledge, and every once in a while I may have a question for him. But if you have any ever, ever have any questions uh, about sports, uh, any sports related programs uh, or, or sports related questions, you can always ask, Brian. You know, you do it live. We're doing everything live here. And you can always ask the questions. If you haven't had a chance to do it yet, if you have a question still right now, uh, I think he may be still lingering online and uh, he'll be able to answer your questions. Just, just type it right in there. Use your fingers. Let them do the walking. And um, you'll see you right there on the big screen. And in case you're just joining us, the name of the show is called Talk Back Live. I'm Frank Allen, and I'm going to be with you for the balance of the show. And, uh, of course, uh, we always have a lot to talk about, and you can be part of the action, too. Now, some people, you know, when they come on, they watch the show, and as much as we like communicating with everyone and talking to everyone, we love doing that. Uh, some people just want to sit back, relax, and, and not say anything. And, and that's okay, too. But as long as you're out there, that's the most important thing. So um, we thank you so much for that. Now, we're in the evening hours here. And we're coming to you from New York City. So we're in the evening hours here. But you, on the other side of the world, you may be someplace else. It could be morning. I have, for instance, in Japan, it, it's, it's going on uh, uh, 11 o'clock in the morning in Japan. Now, you may be at the water cooler talking about something. I don't know. Uh, you, may, you, you may be on your coffee break, you know. And as I always say, if you're on your coffee break, take that coffee break and sit at your desk and uh, and 
watch the show at the same time. And then when the coffee break is over, then you do what they call multitasking, you watch the show, and then you work at the same time. However you're watching, and we're global, we're all, all around the world, so there's not a place on God's green earth that you can't go and find us. And we're right there for you. So uh, and tell your friends and family, keep them abreast about the show. I think it's that time, don't you think? I think it's that time. So it's that time to go back in time. Let's say, because on this day in history in 1940, at the 12th, uh, at the 12th, uh, the Academy Awards, Gone with the Wind wins eight Oscars. Robert uh, Donat and Vivian Lee also wins. And Hattie, Hattie McDaniel becomes uh, the first African-American woman to win the Oscar for Gone with the Wind. On this day in history, 1956, U.S. President Eisenhower announces he will seek a second term. On this day in history, in 1960, the first Playboy Club featuring bunnies opens in Chicago. On this day in history, also in 1960, John F. Kennedy makes missile gab. That's the, uh, that's the, oh, oh, he makes a missile gap, the presidential campaign issue. On this day in history, also in 1960, KRET TV, that's Channel 23 in Richmond, Texas. That's a public station that begins broadcasting. On this day in history, in 1968, the Beatles, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club, Hearts Club Band wins Grammy Award for Album of the Year, uh, the first rock LP to do so. And on this day in history, 1968, the National Advisory Commission on civil uh, disorders reports against racism and uh, demands aid given to blacks. And back in 1976, ABC TV broadcast premiere of the 1965 hit, The Sound of Music. In the year 2000, Giant Records releases the, the American rock band Steely Dan's Two Against Nature. And that's the eighth studio album and the first in 20 years, it wins the Grammy Award for that year. As a matter of fact, they win four that year. On this day in history in 1904, band leader Jimmy Darcy was born in uh, Shenandoah, Pennsylvania. He died in 1957. On this day in history in 1920, actor James Mitchell from All My Children, he was an actor from All My Children. He was born in Sacramento, California, and he passed away 2010. And at the year 2012, actor Dick Van Dyke weds his second wife, American makeup artist Arlene Silver in Malibu, California. And finally, Davy Jones of the Monkees dies uh, on this day in history from a heart attack. He died at the age of 66 years old. And that's what's happening on this day in history. And guys, if you know if you happen to know anything that uh, happened on this day in history, we had a short list this week. Not many things happened on the 29th because you know we don't get a 29th every year. See, that's what I'm talking about. So uh, obviously there, there weren't a lot of things that were happening. But anyway, if you know of anything that's happening on this day in history, uh, I I would be interested to know because, like I said, you know the 29th comes every so often. You know, it's the leap year. You know, a leap year, as uh, Mary indicated to, comes every four years. And uh, I'm just glad I wasn't born around that time in February. You know, some people uh, were born around that time and they're younger than they look, <laughs> if you know what I mean, right? Uh, so anyway, um, <laughs> that's it. But if you know anything that's happening on this day in history, let us know, you know, type in and I'll see you right there. Just let your fingers do the walking on your keyboard, on your computer, right there, directly on your computer and all of those fine places. So I want to say hello to all of you guys uh, who are coming in, who have come in, all you guys on Instagram. Thank you so much for being with us. As you already know, we uh, broadcast each week at this time, uh, we come live from New York City. And uh, we want you to tell all your friends about it. So if you're watching us on Facebook, uh, take a little more time, if you will, to uh, tag your friends, tag this show. You can actually tag this show to your friends, all right? All you have to do is do that. They'll see that tag from coming from you. And what they'll do is they'll know it's coming from you. They'll trust you. 
and I, I hope they trust you. And they will click onto the head tag and it brings them directly to us. It's the same thing on Instagram. I believe you can do the same thing on Instagram. Having, I never tried that, but I believe that you can. There's a way to do it. And for the rest of you who are watching us on uh, YouTube, remember I have a YouTube channel, which of course some of you may be watching right now. Take the time and uh, be part of us. You, you can do that by clicking on uh, subscribe. Subscribe to my YouTube channel is right there. How do you do that? You don't use your fingers unless, of course, some people, these new computers today have touch screens. Who knows? All right. But if you don't, all you have to do is grab your little mouse, drag it over, hit the arrow, the arrow point right on subscribe right there and click on to it. And of course, you'll find that uh, you can it joins automatically. And the good thing about it, there's no financial charges for you. It's all free. We do. We give everything free away. I give everything away free. Not, nothing. I give everything away free. You know, you know. Uh, so. Uh, you know, click on to that, be part of us. Because the thing about it, when you click on, that makes you, of course, a full-fledged member. You can be a full-fledged member even if you didn't click on, but it helps us out a lot when you do, you know? But the good thing about it is when you click on to it from now on, from here on, right? From here on, every time uh, we come on live and you happen to forget about the show, but you happen to be online, notification will pop right up and all you have to do is click onto that notification and brings you right to the YouTube channel. And even if we post a video of some sort, you know, you get notification right there. People are doing it all the time. So why not you subscribe to us right here on YouTube. Now, I always ask you guys, you already know that. I always ask you guys, you know, to be part of us. And I like to interact with you guys like Mary and Laurie and Brian and the rest of you guys who are watching us on Instagram. Uh, uh, they sit back and they just enjoy the show. No problem. I, I can understand that. But if you'd like to get in touch with me without all of that, uh, you could do that too. Now I have two sources. I have an email address and I have a telephone number. Which one do you want first? Wh which one do you want first? All right, well, let me pick it. I'll do the email address first. Let me give you that first, all right? You can take the stuff down and just put it away Stick it in your pocket or whatever it is, you know. Here's my email address, Frank Allen Prod. That's Allen is spelled A-L-L-A-N. You got that? A-N. You do E-N and then it'll never get there. Frank Allen Prod. Prod is P-R-O-D. That's short for productions. Frank Allen Prod at AOL.com. That's Frank Allen Prod at AOL.com. Telephone number is 641 715-3900, extension 467134. That's 641-715-3900, extension 467134. You can get in touch with us anytime, anywhere, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. We never sleep. I sleep. The other people don't, but they'll be able to uh, uh, check it out for you. You can leave a message when you call. And of course, we'll get that message and uh, we'll respond to it as well. You can give us an email. We'll respond to your emails as well. And uh, you have any particular uh, idea about the show. Let's say, for instance, first of all, if you want to critique the show, I don't mind. You know, that's good for us. We learn. You know, that's how we learn. You know, some people, they don't want to be critiqued or they, maybe they're too thin skinned to take uh, constructive criticisms and they get angry and frustrated. No, we don't do that here. As a matter of fact, you, you help us out when you do that, you know, because we'd like to know what you think, you know, what you're thinking. And uh, when you do that, uh, we take it all in. And uh, you may have an idea about the show that we can implement into the show. You may have ideas like that. I can't promise all of that, I can only promise that we do listen to what you have to say. We take everything in consideration and then we, you know, we move on. But if you have any ideas about the show or maybe there's a uh, person you'd like to see on the show uh, to talk to us, you know, maybe Laurie wants to come on the show. I think Laurie, I don't know if Laurie is still there or not. I don't know if she's still out there or not. If she has a new album, Laurie, you're always welcome on this show. You're always welcome on this show. 
if you want to promote your album, you're always welcome on this show. No problem. Uh, it's preferably the coffee hour. That's that's where I usually have do my guests. I don't do a lot of guests on, on this show here, but it's usually it's the coffee hour. Uh, but you get the idea. If you have any ideas about the show, please let us know. And we would definitely love to hear from you. All right. So let me give you that address again. Uh, first, the, the email address again is frankallenprod at AOL.com. That's frankallenprod at AOL.com. And again, the telephone number is 641-715-3900, extension 467134. That's 641 641- 715-3900, extension 467-134. Have you ever waken up in the morning and thinking to yourself, um, do I have a job today? Or did the technology kind of horn then and they don't need me anymore? Do you ever think that sometimes? I mean, I, I really never thought about that when I was working before I started, before I retired in radio. I never really thought about that. But I did know there was going to be a change coming along because technology has a way of of doing things um, or sometimes improving things. And a lot of they, they want to try to improve things or sometimes improvement can put you out of a job, put you out on the street, not basically out on the street, but out of a job, you know, which is one of the reasons why technology is so important to learn, too. You know, you want to keep up with it as much as you can, particularly if you're young. You know, because if you have a long working life, you know, ahead of you, you want to make sure that you stay on top of technology and do things like that. But for people who are basically ready to retire, all right, and still have jobs, but they still need the job for a little while longer. And they think about, you know, what things are going on. Like, like, for instance, we have what they call this AI, that's artificial intelligence, Right. Oh, you know all about that, right? Oh, what you don't know, what you don't know about AI, AI has always been here. You know, it's always been here. Uh, the only difference was, or the only difference is, or I can say was, because, you know, before they came out with uh, the, we used to do things in analog format, right? We used to do analog format in radio. You know, when I was in radio, we had... Um, we didn't do the digital thing. We didn't have the digital thing back then. I mean, I in the end, I worked with it all. But in the beginning, when I started in radio, everything was analog. You know, we used to cut up tape and splice it together and do this and do that. And you work with turntables and cart machines and all of those. No more. Everything is right in the computer and, um, and everything. And a lot of things, in some cases, a lot of things are automated, which a lot of people don't like too much. But then, you know, at this particular point, even automation, you have to have someone around to man uh, the automation because they didn't really perfect that yet. As, as hard as they're trying right now to make sure that they don't have to pay anyone to even sit there and man everything, you know, uh, and people are doing it out of their homes, you know. You know, people are not working. People are, are working. If they're working, they don't go to the office anymore. Uh, uh, people, um, they go to, they, they work from their homes. A lot of people have the luxury of working from their homes. Because now if you have a computer, you can do anything, right? You sit, sit at home and 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 do your jobs as long as you have all of the, the formats uh, that they, or the softwares that's needed for your particular position at work. As long as you have that, you can do anything from home. But getting back to AI, it's always been here. And it's been here in radio and TV, in the music industry. What AI does is, is, is no more than uh, an enhancement of whatever. Let's say, for instance, uh, if you're in a studio, you're in, in a recording studio, you know, uh, and you record a track or something like that. And uh, if Lori is still out there, she could testify to this because she's a singer uh, and I'm a radio guy. So we both spend time in studios that you can enhance your voice. You could, They can make you sound better than what you sound. If you're into, let's say, the modeling industry, they can make you look uh, like make you look better than what you really look, you know, not that you, that you're a bad looking person, but they can make you look that much better. You know, you don't think, you don't actually think that Cindy Crawford wakes up in the morning looking like that, do you? You don't actually think that, do you? Uh, 
You don't actually think that if Cindy Crawford didn't wear makeup before she went out to the grocery store that you could recognize her, right? You don't think that, do you? Well, that's what it is. And I'm not taking anything or taking uh, any beauty away from Cindy Crawford, but we all wake up in the morning looking bad. You ought to see me. I look in the mirror and I said, you know, <laughs> whoa, you know, that's a frightening thing in the morning, you know? Uh, and so, you know, that's what uh, AI is. You know, that's all it is. Now, the, the problem with AI is that a lot of people are using it for a lot of different reasons. Sometimes people use it for uh, 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 good things, like, let's say, for instance, like for a model and for a recording artist and for a radio personality or things like that. We can use it for good things. We can make things sound good, sound different, you know. And then there are other people who use it and they have these software out now they have the softwares out now where people anyone can get access to it and they can do things with it maliciously you know they could let's say after i finish this show someone could pick up this show and take this show and and reform the show and make me say things i didn't even say OK, which is one of the reasons why we keep shows, keep all of our shows in our archives. So in case anything goes down, we have the actually living proof, you know. So that's always good to do. You know, if you do things like that, always have control of your masters and all of that. This way you have the living proof. Oh, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. And I have the proof. I'll take it to court. I'll bring it to court. It's right there. So people use it for for malicious things and. Um, and you've seen it on TV. You know, I, I saw a demonstration uh, where they did something with uh, President Biden's voice. You know, they made him say things that he didn't even say. They did it with Hillary Clinton. Uh, uh, and they, they, make it, they, they make an old person look younger. You know, there's a, there's a lot of things that they do. So as a lot of people would think that AI is a dirty thing, it should be outlawed, and I've heard a lot of people say that. But uh, here, here, here's the here's the news. It's not. It's you. You could say that if you want, but uh, it's here to stay. It depends on how one uses it. Now they may have to. What they may have to do down the road, they may have to uh, implement some new laws on how to use it because that what do you think those actors when they went out on strike right what do you think they were they were up in arms about right you know uh they don't want to use you anymore so they use their that your know, one-time image and make everything out of it and they don't have to use you anymore now one that's another thing to get royalties for it i think you should you know anybody that uses your likeness you know you should get something out of it you know but using you on a regular basis and the only the actually the only actors that were really suffering at that time with it were the um let's say the extras the extra actors and the actors that don't have big names like let's say people like uh Denzel Washington Meryl Streep or Tom Cruise or someone in that caliber caliber uh uh you know, you name them, some people, those big actors, you know, Samuel L. Jackson or so, people like that, you know, they don't have to worry about that, you know, because they're, they're top-notch artists, top-notch actors and actresses, you know. But um, it, it's something to, 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 to think about, you know, research and look more into AR and see the pros and the cons. You can always do that, find the pros and the cons. And you know, protect yourself from that. Uh, I don't know if, if a lot of us could protect ourselves, but they would have some laws, you know, some implement some kind of law on when to use it, how to use it. And uh, if they use it maliciously, then be be accountable for uh, their acts. And, and accountability is very important to me. You know, some people, uh, you wonder if they're going to be accountable, but then, you know, that's another show. We'll talk about that another time. I don't know. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, it's about that time to give you uh, those um, those great movies, right? Now, each week, as you already know, the weekend is upon us, or will be upon us, starting tomorrow. Tomorrow is Friday in our town. Uh, some people are already into the Friday mode. 
but we have movies and 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 what i do is that i like to uh each week uh bring you movies that uh that you may like now being at the weekend is here you may want to do something other than whatever you normally do and one of the things if let's say for instance if you're in inclement weather which forces you to stay home uh, it's a good time to catch up on some movies so I have some that I have uh, directly from Turner Classic Movies that I want to add to your bucket list of what to watch this week. So let's get started with that right now. Guess who's coming to dinner? Am I invited? No, that's the movie. 1967, Spencer Tracy, Catherine Hepburn, and Sidney Poitier. That's coming on Turner, Turner Classic Movies. And you can see that that's coming on Friday at 6 p.m. Eastern. Now, all the times I'm giving you are Easter. It's all Easter. So you can check that out. That's coming on. And uh, one of my favorite kind of movies, the black and it's a, not a black and it's a color movie. And uh, it goes back to 1967. So that's a great, everybody likes that movie. I love that movie. You know, it's it, 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 it went ahead of its time, I think. You know, and if you don't know what I mean by that, you have to watch the movies to understand it. Marty from 1955, Ernest Borgnine was the character Marty. And you can check that out. That's a great movie. It's a black and white movie from 1955, also on Turner Classic Movies. And you can check that out Saturday. That's at 12.15 a.m. Eastern. So that's Saturday morning, Friday night, Saturday morning. Now, if you're not up at that hour, or maybe uh, you would like to see it, and your eyes are drooping and you can't see it. Well, you know, something is no excuse. You could DVR all of these movies that I'm telling you about. You can DVR them all. And uh, you can watch them later on at your own time convenience. You can do that. That's possible. See, technology has its place. It's good in a way, right? So you can do that, DVR them, and then watch them later. Here's another one. I think this is one of Brian's favorite. If not his favorite, he got a, he's got his favorite character in it. Yankee Doodle Dandy, 1942, James Cagney, Joan Leslie, and Walter Houston. And that's on Turner Classic Movies. And that's Sunday at 3.30 a.m. Eastern. Again, that's 3.30 a.m. Eastern. That's early in the morning, way back. If you, a lot of you may not have insomnia. Right, and you can't hang out with it. And those of you who do, you can watch it. But again, you can DVR them. Nevertheless, you can do that. So check that out. That's Yankee Doodle Dandy, and that's Turner Classic Movies Sunday at 3.30 a.m. Eastern. Here's another one that goes back to 1972 with Cicely Tyson and Paul Winfield and Kevin Hooks called Sounder. And that's on Turner Classic Movies. Um, and that's Sunday at 12 p.m. Eastern. Check that out as well. And last but not least, now here's one of my favorite ones. This, this is another black and white movie back in 1945 called The Lost Weekend. It's a very, uh, it's a very familiar movie from a lot of people who, who really like movies and like these classic movies starring Ray Milland, Jane Wyman, and Howard De Silva. And that's on Turner Classic Movies. That's Sunday at 4 p.m. Eastern, The Lost Weekend. I'm not going to even tell you about the theme of that movie. I want you to watch it. I think you'll like it. It's a great movie. I watch it whenever it, whenever I can watch it. I mean, I lucky for me, I have it in my archives. And I can watch it anytime I want. But for those of you who've never seen this movie, check it out on Turner Classic Movies. Now, when you go to Turner Classic Movies, right? You turn on your TV, go to Turner Classic Movies, go to the program guide because there may be other movies that I didn't mention that you may like and you can do that. Just scroll, scroll down and look at the program guide and you see them all. And while you're there on demand, there are a lot of great free movies there from A to Z. A lot of them you can check out that may bring you back some memories. You can look at it that way. Then you have the pay-per-view movies, movies that are in the theater now that you can watch in the comfort of your own home and movies that were once in a theater not too long ago, but they still linger and you can watch it. You pay a little less though, and you can watch it there. A lot of nice children programs, documentaries, sporting events, everything is right there. If you miss a sporting event, you could watch it the following day on demand, sometimes without commercials. So check it out. So let me quickly give you uh, these movies once again before we go off. Uh, let's get started. Let's, guess who's coming Coming to dinner? Starring Spencer Tracy, Catherine Hepburn, Sidney Poitier. And that's Turner Classic Movie Friday at 6 p.m. Eastern. You have Marty, Ernest Borgnine, 
Turner Classic Movie Saturday at 12, 15 a.m. Eastern. Yankee Doodle Dandy, James Cagney, Joan, Joan Leslie, and Walter Houston. Turner Classic Movie Sunday at 3.30 a.m. Eastern. Sounder with Cicely Tyson, Paul Newman, and Kevin Hooks. Turner Classic Movie Sunday at 12 p.m. Eastern. And The Lost Weekend, uh, Ray Millant, Jane Wyman, and Howard DeSilva. Turner Classic Movie Sunday at 4 p.m. Eastern. Give these movies a try. I think you'll like them. OK, well, it's time for me to get out of here, the chimes and all. But I'm going to be back here on tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Eastern for the coffee hour. I'm going to be along with Brian Camp with sports. He'll be here. You heard him. He said he'll be here. He'll have sports for you. And I hope that you will be here, too. Now, if not, we'll be back here next Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern for more of Talk Back Live. Brian Camp with sports. And of course, I look forward to seeing you then. Until then, ladies and gentlemen, have yourself a Great morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Take care. You've been watching Talk Back Live with your host, Frank Allen. The producer is Al Dale. Technical assistant, Dave Taylor. Research by Sandy Pierce. And I'm your announcer, Donna Stenke. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time on Talk Back Live.